So is this an issue of distribution or are we seeing people just a little bit hesitant about getting inoculated? It's really both at this point. We are seeing people in every state who are hesitant. And of course, the distribution of the vaccine is going pretty evenly across states. So we're seeing around cities, for example, there's a lot of demand and it's very difficult to get appointments, even in cities that are doing mass vaccination events. But if you're willing to drive a few hours, you know, an hour, two, three outside of the city, you can generally get to rural towns where they have plenty of vaccine and not enough people who are signing up to get it. So if you're willing to travel within your within your state or across state lines, vaccines are available, just maybe not close to where you live. So when it comes to the latest on where we're seeing, uh, you know, some of these nations banning or, or just refusing to use, how closer are we to seeing these you know, unused stockpiles being donated to countries that, you know, do need it. And and does the psychology of, of developed countries not wanting to use these vaccines play in there as well when it comes to hesitancy and rollouts? We are seeing millions of vaccines starting to build up in the United States. Of course, we have a stockpile of the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's not approved yet here. And the J&J &J vaccine is currently on pause exactly because of what you're discussing, these, these clots that we're seeing. Many developing countries are still rolling out their vaccines. They're saying that they will take the AstraZeneca and the Johnson and Johnson shots that the risk of these clots is so low compared to the very high, serious, and deadly COVID infections that they're experiencing that they do want to get access and they feel like they can control who gets the vaccine to reduce the risk of the clotting. As far as when the U.S. is going to start making those available to other people or indeed even move them around within states or between states, it's unclear how, that, how we're going to get to that point. That's a risk supply chain issue. It's an organizational issue. And we haven't seen an awful lot of great movement when it comes to that particular space. When you think about it broadly, though, very soon we're going to have many, many more vaccines than we have people who want them. Hopefully that means it'll trickle down and people in other areas will have access to these shots. Uh, Michelle, before we let you go, we're seeing some odd trends globally. Brazil's uh COVID pandemic right now more deadly than, say, India. Do we have any idea why the case fatality ratio in Brazil is twice that of India? It is very unusual what is happening across different parts of the world when it comes to the COVID epidemic. And honestly, scientists don't know exactly what's going on here. There are, of course, a couple of issues. The outbreak right now that's happening in Brazil is so intense that they're overwhelming their hospitals. So when you can't get good care in a hospital, even if they know what to do for you, if you can't get access to it, you're more likely to die. Of course, also in Brazil, they're experiencing an outbreak fueled by this P1 variant. It could be that the type of vaccine or the type of virus that they're experiencing is a more deadly virus, and that could be contributing to those numbers. Finally, there are genetic differences among people, and it could be that people from Southeast Asia, people from India, perhaps are just genetically less vulnerable to COVID death. That's something that the researchers are going to have to dig into much more deeply in the days and months to come.